Hey guys! <laughs> so I recorded this entire voiceover just now and flipped back to my voice recording software and discovered that it hadn't recorded at all. Ugh. You know this is like the second time that this has happened to me in the space of a few weeks where I recorded an entire video. In fact, the video about the books that got me hooked on urban sketching, if any of you guys have seen that video, that was the second time round because, um, yeah, I just guess I didn't press record or it stopped recording or I don't know. I just feel like technology is against me right now. Anyway, I'm seeing that this is recording, so let's, let's you know, I'm just going to minimise that and I'm going to come back here and let's do a thing. Okay, so today's video I wanted to chat to you guys about sketching something seemingly quite mundane. So like a boring object, something that on its own doesn't seem all that interesting, but how you can sketch it and make it look really badass. So how this came about was that I discovered an Australian artist, watercolour artist called John Lovett, and he's got a series of paintings that I saw on his Instagram profile of hammers, and they look so amazing and I was like wow that's just I wouldn't even think that you could paint a hammer in an interesting <laughs> way but um yeah he has absolutely nailed it no pun intended um so I saw his hammer paintings and I thought that's really cool I really like that idea of just taking something seemingly quite boring and making a really beautiful piece of art based on it um and then the other artist that I follow on Instagram, I've followed her for years, I really love her work, is Electric Mirror and she, I believe she's a Russian artist and again she's got these pictures on her Instagram profile of empty takeaway cartons and sets of keys and banana skins and stuff like that. Again it's just so creative and so amazing how someone can take something so bland and just turn it into a beautiful illustration, sketch, painting, whatever. So, me seeing those pieces just, you know, over time, over the last few months or years or whatever, when I was at my friend's house the other week, I was I was there for a week while they were on holiday, I, I was sat in the downstairs toilet because, you know, all good inspiration strikes when uh, you're you're on the toilet. And I was looking at their door handle on the inside of the door, and I was looking at it, and I was like, God, that's really cool. It's got this amazing piece of rust across it. It kind of looks really old. And I was like, it's just really cool. And then it sprang into mind. I was like, I could sketch that. That would be a really beautiful thing to sketch. And then all these kind of connections came with, with John Lovett's um, stuff, the, the hammers and and electric mirror with her takeaway cartons and whatnot, and I was like, yes. And also, I think this would make a really good subject for a YouTube video to share my inspiration <laughs> with you guys as well. So, here is the uh, door knob, door handle, whatever you want to call it, and yeah, I'm going to sketch it in this video and see how interesting we can make it look, or how even more interesting we can make it look. So first off, I am just sketching it out in pencil. I think this is like a B or a 2B pencil. Um, just getting the basic ideas in there, the basic shapes, making sure things are sort of in proportion. I think I've actually drawn it a bit too long um, or a bit too wide, but that's fine. It's just going to add to that kind of forced perspective situation. So I think that's fine. And then for um, this painting, I'm going to use the Schmincke Super Granulating um, Paints, only for certain parts, but I thought this Tundra Orange would just make a really beautiful kind of rust effect, wet in wet with some other colours as well. So, And then I was also really interested to use my favourite paint from this set, which is this Tundra Violet, which is the entire reason I bought this set, to be honest with you. If you've checked out some of the other Super Granulation sets by Schmincke, You'll see they've got quite a few, but the reason, the thing that drew me to this set was that they've got a nice spread of different colours. So they've got, um, you know, a pink, a violet, an orange, a green, a blue. And the other sets, some of them are quite kind of one, like monotone almost, you know, they've got five blues, five greens, etc. So that's what I really liked about this set. And also just really liked the tundra, the look of that tundra violet. It just looked beautiful to me. So I was like... 
I've just bought this smaller set in the cardboard box, which are the 5mm paints, but, you know, for I just wanted to check them out, to be honest, and that's, like, absolutely perfect for me, really. Um, so this is the first time I'm actually using them in a, in a sort of full-on sketch. I've kind of dabbled with them and swatched them and whatnot, but I haven't really sort of tried to use... I haven't used them in earnest, really, but looking forward to how this is going to look with the tundra orange in the rust. I think it's going to look really nice. So here I'm just working wet in wet with the tundra orange, probably a tiny bit of Payne's grey. I think I'm using a bit of the English red for my white knight set. It's a really strong colour though, so you've got to be really careful with that one. Just grabbing a few different shades from here and there and just trying to really focus on making this, I don't know, as convincingly rusty looking as I can. But again, the, the texture that that granulating paint provides just lends itself absolutely perfectly to a rust effect. So it ended up being that I actually didn't even pick up my pen for this sketch. I drew it out in pencil and then I was like, Do you know what, I'm just going to go straight in with watercolour and see what happens, you know. And I got to the end and I was like, I'm not even going to touch this with a pen, I don't need to. So this is kind of a very different sketch for me just using watercolours, but it was really nice to kind of push outside of my comfort zone a bit and just uh, really go for it with the watercolour. So the main thing for me in this sketch is I'm really trying to, rather than um, using, you know, exact colours or anything like that, um, I really wanted to just focus on the tone, so making sure I was getting the light bits light and the dark bits dark and that kind of thing. Um, I didn't really want to use realistic colours because I wanted to make it look as expressive and interesting as possible, you know. So while my colours aren't a massive departure from from life, you know, they are obviously my my interpretation, which I think is, I think that's what makes something like this look more interesting. And I'm sort of using a mixture or between my Escoda Reserva um, brush, the size 10 I've got for the larger areas that I'm doing, and then also my Rosemary & Co travel dagger brush which I use for more detailed parts um, so really nice combination of brushes to use. So guys I just wanted to let you know if you're interested I have got a Patreon page now and I am adding to it obviously as much as possible um, so some of you might have been over there to get the reference photo from the last video I did which was the sketch of Chichen Itza so that's over there that's for everyone whether you pay or not you can see that but if you do pay uh, a bit of money I've got three different tiers which offer you various different benefits and yeah I've just got a multitude of videos and posts uh, everything you know from behind the scenes maybe new supplies that I've got for example these schminke paints that I'm using in this sketch uh, I've got a little video on that I've started dabbling a bit with gouache, so I talked to my Patreons about that as well. So it's just everything that's a bit more out of scope on this YouTube channel or a bit more like behind the scenes. It's all over there and also that's kind of where I hang out and just get to chat to people a bit more in depth than I obviously can do in YouTube comments or whatever. So if it's something you're interested in, just hop over there and, and do go and have a look. As I said, there's three different tiers which are, I hope, all fairly affordable um, for the amount of benefits and content and interaction we can have together. So, yeah, check it out, patreon.com slash urbansketchingworld. And here is the Tundra Violet in action. I just absolutely love this paint so much. You can really see the separation of pigments from the kind of darker purpley colour to the kind of more pinky orange colour that's in there. The, the pigment codes are on the tube, I just, I don't know what they are off the top of my head, but um, it just looks really beautiful. I think sometimes knowing the exact information behind the effect is, ruins the magic, so uh, I'm not one for over-analysing uh, things too much, but uh, there are so many YouTube videos on these sets, these um, these Schmincke super granulation sets, so, so many videos, so um, yeah, if you want like proper information about them, then uh, go check it out. I didn't really want to add to the noise. And also it's just not my jam really getting too into the, the heavy science of things. But um, I just like using stuff and I either like it or I don't like it. <laughs> That's about as complicated as I get sometimes. So uh, yeah. 
So again, yeah, I'm just on this door handle. I mean, I think I've overdone it a bit really, but I was really trying to focus on where the highlights were and where the darker parts were. I think I lost it a bit there, but it's fine. It still does the job. So, um, but yeah, overall, I'm really, really loving how this is looking. I feel like I'm doing a good job of building up the different tones and textures and stuff just in watercolour itself. So at no point really was I missing using my pen on this. I was just so happy with how it was how it was looking. So I was trying to keep the background of the door quite light and just add in a few areas just to indicate where the planks of wood are. Obviously the door is white but it's never it's never going to be completely white, you know, there there is various light bouncing off of it. So I just wanted to indicate that with a bit of I think just very pale Payne's Grey and very pale Quinadrica and Rose. I was just trying to keep the same kind of colours going roughly throughout the the sketch just to kind of keep everything nice and cohesive. So yeah, I'm super happy with how this came out. I really didn't have much of a plan, to be honest. I was just kind of going with the flow and seeing where things took me and that took me down the road of deciding to just stick with watercolour and not add in any pen lines. I'm also really glad I went for it and did it across the double page of the sketchbook because I think it just gives it so much more impact um, and obviously I'm you know sketching up super super close like that and I really like the perspective as well so I'm really happy with those decisions that I made. This is a Hanamula watercolour travel sketchbook it's the A5 version so obviously I'm sketching across the double page there so it becomes A4 like that. really like this book sketchbook for kind of everyday watercolour and travel sketching use so I do highly recommend it but yeah that's pretty much it for this video guys I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope it's inspired you to sort of look at things differently in your space in your home or your wherever you are and yeah just look at things a bit differently and think oh wow actually that seemingly boring item could make a really beautiful piece of artwork and as per usual, all the links for the video are in the description below. There is links to the things I've mentioned in this video. There's a link to my ebook, which is the last three years of my travels around the world, all of my ink and watercolour sketches, and also my online course as well, if you want to learn in more depth how to achieve some quirky ink and watercolour travel sketches, do go check that out. Otherwise, guys, I will see you in the next video.